Hi, I'm Bob Bankin. I am the Joint Operations Mission Commander for NASA SpaceX Demo 2 mission. So Doug Hurley and I are about to take NASA's SpaceX uh, Demo 2 mission to the International Space Station. Uh, during that mission, we'll uh, uh, perform some checkouts, everything from a response to a fire on board to uh, flying close to the uh, International Space Station manually. We'll make sure all those systems are working uh, during the test flight so that the future missions uh, will have them available even if they don't plan to utilize them. We're hopeful that future crews on you know, Dragon vehicles headed to you know, NASA space stations aren't uh, cursing our names because uh, we accepted some feature that was complicated and hard to train and in the end hard to operate. You know, in the uh, Air Force environment, um, flight test environment, there's always a, a balance of managing risk as you go forward to execute a test point and figuring out a way to you know, collect the data. Um, and do that in the in the calm, cool, collected kind of test environment with uh, experienced folks before uh, you know a pilot ends up someplace a, a little bit more complicated with a, a lot less resources. My role uh, um, for a space mission is is very much the same. You know, my career at NASA has uh, kind of spanned a, a couple of decades at this point. I, I arrived with the class of 2000, uh, went through the training program, primarily focused on the space shuttle and the International Space Station, learning those systems through the assembly process, which was uh, a little bit like uh, where we were with uh, Dragon in the early days, because Space Station kept changing and you had to stay up with it. After that, I was eventually assigned to a series of uh, kind of training activities, both as a long duration crew member and then flip-flopped over and, and flew a couple of shuttle missions, uh, both on Endeavour. After that, I, I came back and uh, uh, kind of worked up the leadership chain uh, through station operations, uh, deputy chief, and then chief of the astronaut office. One of my goals was to try to get as many astronauts uh, off to Kazakhstan so they would uh, appreciate the day when we got to launch again from uh, the Florida coast. Probably two things that jump out to me as, a, as kind of big wins. One is associated with having a high enough fidelity from a training perspective. Both Doug and I can sit in a capsule, we can put on suits, and we can go through a situation or a scenario where the suits are going to inflate to try to protect us from the whatever situation is developing on board the vehicle. And I think one of our biggest accomplishments was uh, a tool to be able to uh, plan our own way out of orbit uh, back to Earth. And we had to come up with a way that didn't break the um, software allocation that was out there. And we just had the big picture of, okay, how does the crew just get home if they end up in this situation? How does the crew get home if they end up in this situation? When they were able to flip that switch and not count how many failures it took to get there, but except that let's figure out the easiest way to provide that capability and, and they got on board with it, that was the aha moment. You don't necessarily have to save the mission with the crew, but you need to save the crew with the crew is kind of the, the mindset that we've uh, uh, put out there. It's really kind of designed that launch day is kind of uh, relaxed. So we'll get up. Uh, have a little bit of exercise uh, probably or breakfast and then some exercise. Be able to do some uh, last minute uh, you know, phone calls. Uh, we'll probably have lunch, review, uh, weather briefing of some sort to understand what our, our weather's gonna look like. Uh, we'll hear anything associated with the vehicle kind of technical detail wise. We'll get a little bit of an early read on that before the formal process of getting a suit on and then heading out to the launch pad. For me, you know, having uh, launched a couple times on vehicles, you know, the, the second time was definitely different than the first time in terms of uh, relaxation associated with the mission. You're doing that for the first time, you can feel a little bit guilty of, hey, should I study one more thing or is there one more piece of information I should get? Um, so that's definitely different between uh, uh, where I was on my first flight and where I'm at right now. On a deeply personal uh, level, I, I'm really excited that my son has got to get a chance to see me uh, launch into space. Being an astronaut has been a little bit of a, an abstraction thing for him because he's seen me do it in, the, in old videos, uh, but he hasn't seen me do it for real. I, I think it's important for the U.S. to continue to have uh, these exciting things out there from a technical, engineering, science, challenge perspective, because it, it, it motivated me to go into this sort of a career, and I, I know that it, it motivates other children in. And so I'm excited to bring it back to the Florida coast or be a part of bringing it back. You know, I'm just one piece of a, 
you know, multi-thousand member team that's gonna hopefully pull this off uh, uh, in short order. It's inspiring to me and, and I'm just excited to be a part of it.